The New York primaries are the latest installment in the wild and ruckus campaign season, a campaign season that has every candidate doing a lot of math, perhaps some fuzzy math. We're going to have more on the numbers in just a moment. But first, let's pull in our main map reader on the road to the White House. Julius von der is here with us. He was one of the architects of the 2008 Obama winning campaign. He's now a campaign advisor based here in Berlin. Julius, it's good to have you back on the show. Good, good evening. On. So how or why, I should say, why is New York so coveted for both parties and for all of the candidates? Right. I mean, look at the Republican side. It's uh, Donald Trump is at 52 percent uh, as a polling cumulative average uh, going into this uh, uh, Empire State primary. Uh, he needs to finish strong tonight uh, in order to build on his delegate lead. Uh, we just heard in the opening uh, how important it is to rake up those delegates, uh, 95 on the Republican side here in New York, uh, in order to go into a convention uh, to be able to say, I've got the uh, 1237 uh, delegates uh, mm -hmm. in order to close on the first ballot. That's right, 1237, that's that magic number. Let's talk a little bit about the numbers in this campaign. It is safe to say that um, competition for delegates has not been this ferocious in more than a generation. The candidates know that if they want to become president, they have to win their party's nomination. If they want to win the nomination, well, they have to win a certain number of delegates in the primary and caucus season. To win the Republican nomination, any one candidate needs the backing of 1,237 delegates. So you see, click, 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 there's the magic number, 1,237. Now, to win the nomination for the Democratic Party, one of the candidates will need at least 2,383 delegates. So you see, now, these are the numbers on every road sign showing the way to Washington for the candidates. But this time around, those numbers, they've become so important um, and so controversial that it, well, it has the feel um, of a fuzzy math fetish, Julius. Um, when you think about it, help us understand what's going on here, why the delegate competition is so important. Take us back to 2008. Right. Obama, he got the nomination. Was it, was it this simple? He simply had more delegates than Hillary? Right. It gets even more complicated on the Democratic side because they're the so-called superdelegates, so senators and congressmen and women uh, who have uh -huh. another... Uh, uh, vote to cast, but you have to be look at, looking at the numbers. I think Hillary is way ahead of Bernie Sanders. She is comparing it to 2008. She's well ahead of uh, where Barack Obama was compared to Hillary Clinton in 2008. Aha, uh -huh, uh, that's, that's interesting. She's at, right. And so the Sanders campaign, of course, is making an argument. Look, the numbers are not that far apart uh, between him and Hillary right now, uh, leaving out the super delegates, uh, of course. Uh, now, going into uh, yeah. Philadelphia, into the convention, uh, there is a significant lead for Hillary Clinton. She's supposed to be doing very well uh, in this prime election in New York City uh, tonight. I mean, that's what I wanted to ask you. I mean, the math is not so difficult for the Democrats, right. right? I mean, Hillary's lead over Sanders is basically too great to be overtaken now, Absolutely. right? All right, let's talk about the Republicans. I mean, now, the math for them is like, I was telling my producer earlier, it's like calculus, trigonometry, and fractals all in one, isn't it? It absolutely is. And uh, again, for a long time, it looked like Donald Trump uh, was going to be able to close in on the 1237, uh, right. the magic numbers that you've mentioned before. Now, we've had the state party conventions uh, over the last couple of weeks. Yep. And Ted Cruz has a significant delegate operation. So even though Donald Trump did well in a couple of those states where he should have been able to fill the slate of delegates and actually make sure that he has all the delegates uh, uh, proportional to the numbers of votes that he got. Right. Well, it turns out uh, that Ted Cruz was able to manipulate his way into actually getting him more and more delegates, which, of course, uh, leads to great turmoil on the Republican side. Yeah, we know that Donald Trump is not happy with the way the delegate vote counting is going right now. I want you to take a listen to what he just had to say, I think it was yesterday, day before yesterday, about the delegate count. We're going to get to that big 1237, and when we do, we're going to get a little bit of a race. You know, they all say if it's Trump against Clinton, that's going to be the greatest voter turnout in the history of our country. And I think that's true. And that, by the way, is a good thing. It's good for us, too. By the way, the more people that come, the better. But it's a great thing because, you know, historically, our country has done very, very poorly in voter turnout. A lot of people don't vote. I, and I'm, one, I'm wondering there, is it going to make a difference if you have a, a higher voter turnout? Is that going to make a difference with the delegate delegation? 
right. for the Republicans? Well, most importantly, looking at tonight is the question whether Donald Trump actually gets more than 50% of the vote. New York State is a so-called trigger state, uh -huh. meaning that once a candidate clears, on the Republican side at least, yep. clears the 50%, that means he takes all the 95 delegates. If Donald Trump were only to come out at 49%, oh. then, of course, it's getting split up by congressional districts. So right now he's polling, going into New York State. He's go polling at 52%, uh, which means he would clear that trigger and get all the delegates. So it is tremendous for him to be able to pick up the full 95 states. I mean, it has Ted Cruz and John Kasich. They're both smelling blood Absolutely. right now, aren't they? Well, they are. And because if you look at the numbers, it becomes more difficult and difficult for Trump to, to clear the 1237 yep. number which means that on the first ballot, he won't get it uh, at the convention, mm -hmm. meaning that on the second ballot, uh, now the delegates are free, at least a lot of them. Ah, and they'll be able to move. I had to vote for Trump on the first ballot, but now I actually like Ted Cruz better or John Kasich better. But before we wrap things up, let's, talk, let's go back to Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. I want you right. to take a listen to what Bernie Sanders had to say about um, the controversy about how much Hillary Clinton is being paid for her speeches and how they're connected to Wall Street banks. Take a listen. What I think is that if you give a speech for $225,000, it must be an extraordinary speech, don't you think? It must be a brilliant, insightful speech, which will enable us to solve many of the global crises that we face. It must be a speech written in Shakespearean prose. And for those reasons, I think the secretary should share that speech with all of us. I mean, I, you know, very, very briefly here, Sanders, if he can't win the nomination, can he win the character competition? I think he has already done that. I think he's moved the momentum. I think he's moved uh, the tone of the campaign. He's brought issues to the forefront that haven't been talked about. Now, there's an obscene amount of money in politics, yeah. and I think both of them will agree. I think Bernie Sanders has, has moved that debate. Julius Fundelar, as always, thanks for coming in. Good we appreciate you. it.